these little open for business shows at the beginning of the lockdown in the UK just to help local businesses deliver on what they were up to and it's kind of progressed and expanded and now I talk to some amazing people business owners which have got amazing stories to tell things that they're doing we can ask them all sorts of questions so if you're watching on the live please do chuck a little notice in the comments let us know you're watching any questions you have then please do uh, ask your question if you're watching on the replay obviously hashtag replay and we can get back to you today I am joined I've got two today but today our first up we got a good friend of mine, Anna Moss. She is the founder of Brand Stories, which helps SMEs really identify their message and get their brand out there. She's an amazing lady. I've known her for several years, and it's a great pleasure to welcome Anna onto, uh, onto my little show. Anna, tell us, please, how did you come up with Brand Stories? Gosh, what an introduction. We have known each other for years. That's 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 crazy. It's crazy in this world. You think it's short, but it's actually been quite a number of years. So I came from the land of corporates. So my um without giving away my age, exactly. Uh, although it's you know, you know it's 21. But within the within those 21 years, I've had a 25 year career in uh, in marketing um and specifically in brand management. And when I went into marketing and brand management, it was so much more than just managing a brand. So I started off, I was really lucky to cut my teeth with Yacht Play Dairy Crest and Yacht Play do, um, if you're a parent, and, and even if you're not a parent, you'll know they do Putty Fulu, they do Froobs, they do Yop, the big yogurt drink that's, um, oh yeah, Yo To Go and Wildlife, um, but but very much in the chilled yogurts and dessert sector but but mainly on um from ash phrase where they came from flavored from ash phrase um which are really good actually for kids as you know they, they have a lot of the nutrients that kids need etc um so a lot a lot of mums tend to have um a, a putty for loo phase in their child's life mm -hmm. um they then gave me Yop, which was dramatically failing in um the uk at the time it just didn't have a place because it was pre all the different milk drinks that we know and the sort of milkshakes and the sort of Starbucks sort of coffee milk kind of basically that whole freezer that whole fridge section didn't exist so Yop didn't have a place to go because it wasn't a yogurt but it wasn't a drink it, it was it was a, a yogurt drink and so we had a real problem about where it was merchandised and as a result the sales dropped off a cliff and they basically said to me as the youngest on the team well <laughs> you can't really do any more damage so why why don't you have yop which was an enormous enormous opportunity at such a young age and i was like wow so they gave me this this huge thing and um it was literally collided with the societal trend for um forecourt fast food so in all your bp your shell stations your motorway stations where people stopped off they would grab a sandwich and a drink yeah. And um, I launched the 400 mil, 400 gram, which is the, the smaller um, portable drinking bottle, sort of lunchable thing um, that had never existed before because Yop was always quite a big bottle, which again was a problem because people didn't want to drink it all in one go. Then they were like, once it's open, can I put it in the fridge? Can I? So I broke it into the snack sector. So that broke a whole new, um, brought in a whole new business and positioned Yop in a whole different way. Um, and that was just enormously exciting. And I look back on it now and I'm like, I can't believe they trusted me to do that, but they did. Um, I then was headhunted, luckily, to go and work for Wonderbra. Oh, so I looked after, yeah, I, I worked with boobs for five years and it was great. I remember um, those adverts. I, I nearly crashed my car several times. Well, it was the it was the thing. And they did actually put adverts out like, um, this is a government safety announcement, you know, kind of don't look on the... And I'm going to get this wrong now. So on the A4 going out of London, that that big hump bridge, That's that right. um, and this was in the 80s. So I obviously didn't work for Wonder Bar in the 80s because I was still a child. But <laughs> when they did the Hello Boys campaign, their 48 sheets, which are the biggest posters that you can possibly take out, were on that thoroughfare that goes to and from London. And the amount of car crashes on that stretch was phenomenal. And they actually it made the news and it made. That entire campaign 
and it still sends chills down my spine. That entire campaign in the 80s, they spent £300,000 on it, which in advertising money is zero. You couldn't even get a spot on telly. You couldn't. But the publicity and the PR, because it collided again with the whole Spice Girls, the whole women power, the whole women celebrating their bodies and saying, you know, hello, boys, I'm here. I'm not going to shy away anymore. And it was a whole wave that we'd never seen as women before. And you hadn't seen boobs on a billboard before. You hadn't really seen underwear unless you went into an underwear department. It was all quite, you know, not really spoken about. Certainly not on a 48 sheet on your commute into work in the morning. It was a bit kind of with Ava Herzegova in enormous, enormous size in front of you. Yeah, you picked quite um, a pretty model there. <laughs> yeah, she, she was unbelievable. And she and the Hello Boys campaign did actually make her. And, yeah. But obviously she became part of that supermodel. So lots of things collided in a really fortuitous way for, for Wonder Bra at that time. And the, the millions, I think it was um, 10 million pounds worth of PR from the back of the 300,000. And I think it was maybe 248 sheets that we did, which was nothing. But it was the PR, the car crashes, the what it said about society, the Spice Girls thing, the men being shocked by it and people being outraged you know the publicity they got was incredible and that's why it's still one of the top 10 ad campaigns ever 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 in the entire history of 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 this country and ad campaigns um and that was so lucky and, I, and they seconded me out after a while to Scandinavia so I worked out in uh, Scandinavia and Nor Norway Denmark and Sweden and took out the UK marketing strategy out to them um then I sort of had quite a few stints in um, sort of pharmaceuticals and healthcare. So Rescue Remedy, which is uh, very much, and Batch Flower Remedies, which are very much naturals and flower-based um, and um, natural homeopathic medicine, which was very interesting as well, because not everybody believes in that. That was fascinating. Um, and then did sort of stints with other people like Boots. I managed all the um, over-the-counter pharmaceuticals at Boots and also even some of the big brands like uh, Viagra so Pfizer and Viagra and also all sorts of things just anything and everything they do cancer treatment so from the the funny to the deadly serious and the, the yeah. life-saving life-changing stuff um, within that I did a little bit of recruitment and so so I but but recruitment was in marketing so it was always um, in, in in that sector but the common thread throughout all of that was I was so lucky to work with some really incredible brands. And actually every single job I had in corporate, if I said the brand name to you, you'd know instantly what it is. You know, yeah. there's no little brands, there's no. So I got to work with the biggest budgets. You know, we had millions and millions of pounds budgets that I was in charge of, which was just crazy when you start thinking about it. Um, and you get to say how it's spent and you get to, but, when you then I got, I got to a point where I realized that I wanted more and I wanted my own business so I decided to come out of corporate for a number of reasons they were personal and professional reasons um, I felt that I'd done what I wanted to do and it was no longer serving me as a lifestyle because the more senior you get um, the more on call you have to be the more online you have to be and it's it, it just became untenable for me in terms of what I wanted for my lifestyle. So, and I, I've always wanted to have my own business, but I never quite had the courage to do it. I never believed that I could do it. And in all of the marketing that I did with these brands, I was like, well, I can't possibly do all of the things that I've done for all of the products that I've done. So I can't do PR and advertising and radio and social media and branding and product development and packaging design and, and, and. And I could have chosen any one of those avenues to go into in my business. But what gave me the biggest boost is I'm I'm a really creative person at heart. And it was the, the branding side. So I said, OK, I will put aside 90 percent of what I know how to do, which was a really difficult thing to do. And I'll just focus on this 10 percent because there is only me. And in the corporate world, I had agencies doing all of those other elements for me. So as one person in a small business, I had to very much niche down so tightly. And I oh, chose branding. Yeah, I was going to say, because it, it's that niching element. When you, when you set up your own business, you want to be a master and serve everybody. But actually, you know, it's a tough, tough decision to go, right, let's go super, super narrow but be the best at the super narrow. It's incredibly hard. And 
I was acutely aware of that because of the nature that I was going into branding. What I teach my clients is to be so pure about what they do. So if you decide that you are only going to focus on branding, you must only ever focus on branding. So in the initial stages where people knew me as a general marketeer, they would say, oh, can you just help me with this press release? Can you help me with this bit of copy? Can you do this? Can you... And it was so difficult because, of course, I could have said yes in a heartbeat and I could have had more business in a heartbeat. But to be true to what I was doing and to what I tell my clients to do and for the purity of my business going forward, I had to turn them away. And I'd say, look, I'm, I don't do that anymore. But I know someone who does. And But that was really difficult to stick to my guns because I didn't know if it was going to work. I didn't know. Yeah, I, I felt like I was cutting my nose off to spite my face and it was a really uncomfortable time but I do believe that it served me because you know many people know me as a, a branding expert as a brand strategist so um it definitely does work and it stops all the confusion and you know because if one day I'm doing PR one day I'm doing branding one day I'm doing advertising one day I'm doing social media nobody's gonna I'm gonna try and be something to everyone and end up being nothing to no one and it's just gonna be so yeah. Lost yeah. In in the noise. Actually, it's interesting what you're saying there about. And, I, and you don't have to answer this at all. But I was chatting to a an interview the other day, and one of the things that the lady does is she looks at businesses and she says, "I can guarantee you, I'll get you a 33 percent increase in in revenue and profit um, just by looking at it." And one of the big things she does is she looks at where you can work in collaboration with other similar. Uh, industries so for example so it's like you know if people come to you and saying oh could you help with this bit of copy or this bit of social media then you could actually pass that over to another company but still you know get a commission based on that because that was that was one of the things she was saying so many companies just don't do that they just pass it without even thinking that actually you know to, to get business in people spend a hell of a lot of money on advertising and so actually if you're just going to give someone business then um, then they're going to bite your hand off and they will probably pay you for it. That's the that was the answer. But yeah, I have to say I'm not very good at. I've actually never had a commission from anyone for anything. Um, no, but, that's something that I'm I'm always trying to get better at because I'm just too soft. But also, there's something in me that really strongly believes that whilst I'm still a small business, that that, that karma does come back around. And mm. if you put it forward, it absolutely comes back. And I've had so many examples personally and professionally where I've helped someone and maybe months, years down the line, something comes back and you're like, wow, you know, and you just don't know where it came from, but it's this thing that, and, and I do believe that. I do believe if, if you if you put stuff out there for free, if you help people for free, which I do all the time and, and arguably I do do too much and I get told off for it, um, you do get stuff back. It, it, it's just a force, it's just a, a sort of law of nature, I think. It is, totally with you on that, Anna. I've got to admit, yeah, if you put it out there and uh, you will get things back, whether you like it or not, people will. Uh, but that's that's a really important thing that you touched on though, Nick, is the collaboration thing. And um, <laughs> one of the biggest discussions I see in the business groups that I'm in and have been in over five or 10 years is people get really stuck on the word competitors and people get really stuck on, I mean, I saw a post just today in a, in a very big business group that I'm in of someone who again is very successful saying oh, I can't believe it this I'm going to launch this thing and it's so niche and I'm launching it in January and my biggest competitor is launching it next week and I'm so annoyed and blah 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 blah, blah. I just want to go and eat loads of chocolate and drink loads of wine and and there was this big long post about it and I read it and I thought man what a waste of energy seriously it's like and that's what I teach my clients is that there will always be 20 more of you. There will always be 20 other small business accountants who offer exactly the same as you yeah. or um, social media experts, branding experts, any which way, any industry. The nature of small business is that there will be multiples of you. And some and some people will do the same as you. Some people won't do the same as you. Some people will do it better. Some people will do it worse. And some people will be, you know, bang on. And you're like, we're kind of butting heads because it's almost identical. But the thing that people must remember is that the reason they are in business is because people choose to work with them. Yeah. 
And the them, so the you part, is the part that no one can ever, ever, ever take away from you. No one can ever copy you. So people can copy your ideas or they can copy your launches, but they can't ever be you. And that's the essence of a small business. And that's what I really try and drive home to people is that just be like a a cart horse, put your blinkers on, stay in your lane, focus on moving forward, but don't don't get sidetracked, don't look at what other people are doing because no one will ever do it the way that you do it. And by default, you'll bring your people with you and you might not bring everyone with you and you don't need to, you only need to bring a tiny part of your market to be successful. And the big competitor around the corner, well, their people will stay with them because if you try to work with them, it it you wouldn't be able to do the both, you know, that you wouldn't suit them and they wouldn't suit you. So... Nick, you, I've lost you. Are you still there? I'm not frozen. We're frozen. Okay. I'm not sure how I leave. How do I leave? Is it on the red? Remove. <laughs> 